I was looking at Lotus's current lineup, and for a moment, I was actually excited about the future of the sports car. The Amira has all of the components that have built this small niche cult following that Lotus still has here in 2024. And despite the fact the rest of the lineup has none of that, they're all electric. It gave me hope. I was like, hey, Lotus can build the cars that we wanna drive, stiff, gas-powered, manual transmission sports cars, and they can have their silent, soul-crushing EVs. That was until, of course, I found out the Amira will be Lotus's final gas-powered production sports car. That's a problem. Guys, I've been waiting for this moment for a very long time. Same supercharged 3.5 liter V6 behind us. Listen to that. Built by Toyota, it's the 2GR engine making 400 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque. So that 310 pound-feet of torque is at 3,500 RPM. It's good, it's, the good thing is it's always there. You never have to ask twice with the Amira. It just delivers what it says, but it's a lot more top end happy than I was expecting. At 5,000 RPM and you have another 1,800 RPM to play with up to 6,800 RPM. It's no Cayman GT4, it doesn't scream like a, a flat six from Porsche. But the best part about the supercharger wine is it just kind of, it's almost kind of like masking the sound of the V6 a little bit because we all know V6s are not the greatest sounding engines. This one is as satisfying as a V6 can get. How it sounds, how it feels, torque is everywhere. And it just has like a natural feel to it, right? Yeah, 4,500 and above is the sweet spot. <laughs> the wine, the wine is just, I didn't think I was gonna like it. I didn't think I was gonna ask more of the engine, like ask it to keep giving me noises, but it doesn't feel overstressed either. And it's the perfect amount of power for this car revs so fast, so incredibly quick. Six speed manual, of course you can spec it with an eight speed dual clutch. That's a mistake. And you look behind, you can see the throttle actuator doing its thing there, putting in work with the engine. Thank you, Lotus, you didn't have to. You really didn't have to do that, but thank you. It's a little bit distracting, but it's just little cues like that the manual transmission too that just give you the sense that it is still true to its roots and it feels it. And that's saying a lot considering the last Lotus I drove was a track prepped Exige S1, a car in which one poorly placed pothole could be the difference between mild back pain and a trip to the ER. Blend that with severed vocal cords caused by your many attempts to communicate with your passenger and what you've got, believe it or not, is the dream of many. Bliss for the track, but compromised on the street to the extreme. So I'll admit, despite knowing Lotus has been slowly padding that experience over time with additional tech and comfort, I've still never driven a newer Exige or even an Evora. Now here we are 24 years later after the Exige was launched and the Amira is a stark contrast to state the obvious. off the line here. Click, clack, burble from the exhaust. All like the tactile sensations and audible feedback that I want, it's not overwhelming though. And unlike the Exige S1, like I'm not hearing all these pebbles come up on the underside. 
McLarens give you that. Any kind of carbon tub supercar would give you that. And that's the benefit of a sports car here too. It's, it's the perfect size. What was I talking about up top about components that make, that have built the cult following that Lotus has in 2024? Well, uh, yeah, a manual transmission, a lightweight car, which the Amira is, it weighs about 3,200 pounds. Uh, and it's, it has to be mid-engine, of course, rigid, which this is, uh, and just fun to drive. It needs to be hardcore enough that you don't feel like you're sacrificing much. Now it has all of that, but what Lotus has done here is they've refined the car and made it a little bit more livable. All new chassis, bonded aluminum chassis here for the Amira. It's a little bit larger than the Evora in most dimensions, but largely the same size, really easy to place. Throttle input's great. We have three drive modes here. We have Tour, Sport, and Track. None of which change the suspension parameters. Suspension is fixed. You are able to spec it, either the Touring spec or the Sport spec. They're physically the same dampers. Slightly tweaked dampers and then different spring rates you get with the Sport suspension. I'm on Sport suspension. That comes with uh, Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s. An insane tire for this car. I mean, 295s in the back is more than enough. And we do have the exhaust here that will change tone based on our drive modes. The car is stiff. Not getting unsettled though at all. I haven't driven one with the touring suspension, but I would imagine uh, if I was in a city like Los Angeles, I would probably go with the touring suspension. That being said, most scenarios, smooth roads, sport is not too stiff. It's what I would expect. You know, if this was an S class, yeah, I would be like, this is ridiculous. Give me some give, guys. Clutch feels great. Clutch is pretty heavy for daily driving, but out here it is perfect. It's got about the same weight as the brake pedal. Brake pedal's firm and responsive. Great shifter action here. Gears are close, easy to drive. There have been a few times where I have missed gears. Mostly the 3-2 downshift under hard driving, really trying to downshift up to, you know, six, 7,000 RPM. Yeah, it's tough to get that 3-2 downshift. That's happened multiple times. But it is easy to heel toe. And when you do nail those downshifts, I mean, new cars don't get any more satisfying. They don't. It is a dying breed. And for that, Lotus, I applaud you. I don't understand you, but I applaud you. Never overpowering, never too much. And I had to choose which shoes I was gonna wear today. The pedals are so small. You can't just walk right into this after a day of work uh, in your boots and drive this car home. It is not that. I love that. You have to cater to the Amira's needs. Yes, please. That's fine. I'll dance. Hydraulic steering though. Yes. Lotus kept the hydraulic steering. You know, steering is sharp. It's not too heavy, but there is just so much feel. I get the sense that it's going to teach me something as a driver. And that comes through everything. The way you dip into the corner, lift off, the rear rotates around. You're like, all right, maybe not quite as hot the next time. These seats are great. The suspension is stiff, but the seats are really comfortable, so there's kind of, it, it makes up for the stiff suspension. And it's one of the last true chuckable, like lightweight cars you can buy. I am so happy that I didn't drive a Lotus between the Exige S1 
and this car right here because if if this didn't have a badge on here i would have never guessed those two cars were built by the same manufacturer it has changed that much there's no cage in here alcantara headliner alcantara steering wheel that's optioned here this is going to wear out we all know that um everything else feels solid there's a little bit more space in between me and the passenger compared to an Avora. I've never driven an Avora, but I will take Lotus's word for it. These seats, like I mentioned, phenomenal 12-way adjustable heated. Uh, we've got white LED mood lighting. Yeah, it's small in here, but you have armrests in the right place. We have cup holders, cup holders, yes. I know the Avora 400 had one, uh, but having two cup holders in here is huge. Kind of annoying though, because anything larger than a tiny small cup of coffee or something, you're shifting. So yeah, driving takes a priority. I'm okay with that. We're fine with that. Headroom is great. I would definitely fit in here with a helmet. I'm 5'9". If you're a little bit taller, maybe not. Simple infotainment here. Just great UI. Easy, simple. Climate control is analog. We have proper physical controls for the climate control. Yes, <laughs> and a little race car man with a helmet, little nod to their racing heritage, of course, uh, with Lotus, but everything's just easy to use. Climate can also be adjusted on the screen, so you have your option there, and of course, standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, yeah, so I've got my water bottle down here in this pouch. I've got, uh, well, I don't have anything in there right now, but there's a small little compartment down here with a USB, and then uh, behind your cup holders, you have... Uh, a bit of space there. And then behind the seats, this is like an SW20 MR2 Turbo. There's a little bit of space there and a little net. You could fit a few backpacks, three or four backpacks back there. And then it does also have a trunk. People have said it before, I'll say it again. It gets warm. I don't think it gets as warm as the MC20 though. They've put a ton of effort in making the Amira a little bit easier. No, a lot easier to get in and out of versus previous Lotuses. I've never driven an Evora, but that Exige I drove was so bad, you know, so compromised to the point where if I was hungry, if I wanted to stop for food, I just didn't. It was too much of a hassle. I would rather suffer and just stay in the cab and get where I need to go. And that's where they put a ton of focus in improving it over the Evora. You've still got a sill here you kind of have to climb over, but it's really narrow uh, and the doors open incredibly wide. The shut is, it's a nice shut. When you're inside, it still has like 20% of that Lotus kind of tin feeling sound to it. <laughs> Maybe that's a little bit harsh, but uh, on the exterior here, wow. The Amira, especially when compared to a 718 Cayman, just stands out. Uh, when you stand next to this car, the best way I could describe it is this is basically the same size as a Ferrari F355. It's what Ferrari's V8 cars used to be, right? It's a little bit wider and a little bit lower than a Cayman 718. To me, there's no contest. I would much rather look at this car. No one gives a second look to a 718 Cayman, unless it's, you know, GT4, GT4 RS. You guys get what I'm saying? There's a lot of aero going on here. We have the 20 inch alloy wheels here. We've got four piston brakes up front and to me the most impressive thing that lotus kind of did here with the design is just create a car that has all the performance chops yes if you look at the rear end underneath there's a huge diffuser and a ton of aero going on here uh, of course we've got these <laughs> vents in the back to extract pressure from the rear wheel wells huge intakes on the side here the bottom of the door scoops in here all functional but there's no big wing you know there's no uh, tacked on kind of bits of aero that compromise the car's looks in the pursuit of speed. And that is just really tough to pull off. There's not many cars that can do it. God, just an amazing looking car. Road noise is still there for sure and it's stiff. Is it completely happy in the city going light to light? No, it, it takes a little bit to get used to. It takes about, took me about 20 minutes to get the heel toes down, to get 
the shifts down, the one-two shifts smooth for daily driving. But that's how it should be. An Amira should have a learning curve to it. It should be slightly difficult to drive. And all of this is within context. This is such an easy car to live with. Everything feels natural and authentic. The car just is what it is. The drive modes aren't complicated. Because we don't have adaptive suspension, I can't individualize all my settings. I don't have a million menus to go through. It's just nothing more than it needs to be. It's super laser focused, which is what I want. And Lotus is one of the only manufacturers who's able to build a car that feels as buckled down and connected as this does, while still making it somewhat livable as a daily driver. The Amira lacks that final degree of precision confidence a Porsche gives you. It feels like your driving instructor one moment and your backseat driver the next. It's rough, it's loud, yet somehow feels natural, even though it could bite back at any moment. For a Lotus, yeah, it's refined, but in a sea of dumbed down computer driven hybrids, it's as raw as it gets. While editing this video, Lotus has actually pushed back on its promise of an all EV lineup by 2028, something that would have pegged this the final gas powered Lotus ever to leave the production line. While this still could be the case, it seems Lotus hasn't actually ruled out a hybrid system for any number of their current or upcoming models. While their future, like many, feels uncertain, I would not hold my breath for any manual transmission follow up to the Amira.